Well, hi, everybody. Welcome to the latest edition of the In the Bullseye podcast. I'm voice of the Bulls, Paul Peck. Got a lot to talk about with UB football coach Maurice Linguist. And, Mo, I'm thinking about the season ended right before Thanksgiving. You have had an incredible two months of adding players, staff changes, players coming, players going, uh, this incredible challenge that is college recruiting now just sum up for me what the last two months have been like yeah you know I just think um you know we we, we did an outstanding job I feel like as a staff uh, just uh, with an anticipation of of really evaluating our roster and what we needed to go attack and and the areas that we needed to address and and uh, you look at the work that we put in over the last two months and uh, maybe my, maybe minus one day over uh, over Christmas where I made sure I stayed in the house with the family. I mean, it's been nonstop. I mean, we really have a mindset where we're 24-7, 365. Every day we're trying to improve the roster, build the roster, grow the roster. And uh, we are beyond excited about the additions that we have coming uh, from all over the nation, uh, from all sorts of different backgrounds and families. And, and they're all made a, made a great decision to come here and join us here at UB. Before we dive into some of your thoughts on the individual players, um, this has all changed, right? You, you've been doing this a long time. I would think you would tell me this year of, of recruiting and roster management has been unlike any other that you've ever dealt with. How have you grabbed a hold of it? Yeah, I just think uh, just always being able to maybe see around the corner a little bit and, uh, and swiftly adjust with whatever the rules may be. Um, uh, just getting a grasp on number one, you know, what can we can and can we not do in terms of what the NCAA allows with uh, the allocation of new players and and um, and, and and the the new rules that are in place. We're really faced a, a time in recruiting uh, that's never been presented to college football before with the ability to have immediate transfers come in and play play right now. So, um, you know, it's something that we feel like we took advantage of in the right way. And um, uh, roster management really is at the forefront of every program right now because there's a lot of moving pieces to it. I mean, there's a lot of uh, different conversations that you're having right now that have never been had before. Um, and, and just really finding those right individuals that you feel like f- fit the DNA of who you are uh, is most critical for us right now. Fans can go to ubbulls.com and see the story and see the list and see the write-ups. There's t- 24 total new players. Uh, as of our recording of this podcast, we're kind of focused on the 10 transfers that have started and enrolled in school and are off and running here with the second February, the second signing date, which is in February. But, you know, as you look at this whole class, 24 players, uh, 14 before, 10 now, uh, five defensive linemen, eight defensive backs, four wide receivers um you 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 were very targeted in this weren't you yeah we were we um you had to really you know do a thorough evaluation I think you always start with yourself and um you know every year you sit down and you have to assess and you have to and it has to be objective um you have to really look at yourself through multiple lenses and uh and see you know who are you right now and then what do you need to do uh to close the gap uh from where you are to what ultimately you want to become uh, you know, the game of football is really about players. It's about finding the right individuals, um, assembling those individuals together to, to become a team, and then everybody has to make that individual commitment to uh, do things a certain way uh, to put ourselves in the right position to be successful. So, um, you know, anytime we were having a discussion about who we were adding to our roster, we went through a series of, uh, you know, really a systematic approach, um, you know, uh, to who they are and what they're about, and, and uh, really you, you weigh, you know, what they can bring to the table and then how it affects uh, the numbers in, in the room room itself. So um, we feel very, very confident, you know, in terms of what we were able to do over the last two months. And really, you know, you say two months, but it's really been, you know, since the day we got here in terms of really evaluating ourselves and then asking the right questions and then addressing the needs that you need to address. All right, let's dive into some of the positions and dive into some of these new players. And particularly when we talk about these 10 transfers, these are guys that are going to be key players for your team on the field when the season opens at Maryland. Let's start a wide receiver. There's some really interesting high profile names. Uh, we'll start with the best name of the whole group. That's Jalen Booby Curry, the transfer from Arizona, a six foot two, 210 pounder, 26 career games for the Wildcats, eight career starts, three touchdowns last year. Tell us about Booby. Yeah, so so Booby, uh, Booby fans is uh, you guys, it's a name you guys, you're going to come to know uh, very well. Uh, highest rated recruit um, 
uh, had a four-star ranking out of high school, highest rated recruit that we've ever had here in the history of uh, Buffalo football. And um, he's a dynamic guy. You know, he's got he's got he's got great in and out, great balance and body control, uh, eye hand coordination's outstanding. Production from Arizona, signed uh, four-star from from Houston, Texas, and then signed uh, with Arizona out of high school. Had production there, and then we got him over really through prior relationships. When I was at Texas A&M before the first go around, Booby was coming out of high school and uh, know him and his family very, very well. He, he made the decision that he was going to look for a new home, and we got him over here our way, and he had multiple offers from multiple places and uh, just could not be more excited about uh, not just what he does on the football field, but what he brings to the table from a maturity standpoint and from a, from a production standpoint. We feel like he's got a great combination of what we're looking for. Best bio tidbit about Booby is he had a 26 catch game in high school in 2017 that was a Texas state record so yeah. can't wait to see Jalen Curry at wide receiver yeah. how about Justin Marshall uh, six foot three 213 pounder out of Georgia transfer from Louisville I'm just maturity uh, just dynamic uh, you feel his presence as soon as you walk in the room with him uh, just older guy um, great production from Louisville and uh we just couldn't be happier about him. I mean, he's going to open up so many things for us on the offensive side just because he commands a double team. And uh, he's got big body, great catch radius. And I uh, uh, just couldn't couldn't, couldn't wait to, to get him here. And he's here now and he's working. And every time I see him in the morning, I'm just, just excited that he's here with us. So I uh, feel really great about what he's going to bring to the table. And a couple of kids that signed originally uh, in the first go around, that's Trey Hines, junior college transfer, and then Nick McMillan, who's a local kid who played the bulk of his career at Canisius High School. Yeah, so Trey Hines is a, is a from a prior relationship out in uh, California. Trey Hines... Um, uh, his head coach, uh, Tim Tullock, out there at San Mateo Junior College. Uh, Tim's one of the best coaches out on the West Coast, really one of the best junior college coaches in the nation year in and year out. They put out great uh, uh, great players. He called us up and said, hey, we got a, we got a receiver you might want to take a look at. And uh, we uh, had an opportunity to fly out from Buffalo out to the West Coast and see him out there in the San Francisco Bay Area, um, watch this tape and his dynamic, uh, great, great long speed, um, can move him inside and outside. And uh, he's just he lights up a room when he walks in and we're, we think he's going to be an outstanding compliment to what we're doing right now and then and then hometown hero to me Nick McMillan I mean he's he's he had as good as a senior year uh, as you could really have wanted to see out of him and uh, you know he went down to Maryland played that senior year down there at Wise High School in the Maryland area you know we in our eyes you know he's an in-state guy to us that we felt like we had a big recruiting win multiple Mac offers and um, and he decided to stay home here uh, at UB and, and do it for the 716 so we're excited about him so to wrap up the wide receiver discussion uh, uh, you've got Keon Williams coming back. You've got Jamari Gassett, Cameron LeBourne, yeah. Giovanni Ruiz going to be back. Uh, ha- give me an assessment of that position well, you know, now Ke- with Ke- all the new guys. Exactly. Like, Keon was just a big win just because, you know, he had an opportunity to potentially go on to the NFL. Uh, he tested and looked around and see- to see what that was like, and, and um, he made a decision that he wanted to come back one more year. Uh, you know, we got Keon over the summer last year, right before the season started. Keon went on to be our leading receiver this past year, over 800 receiving yards, and um, we just feel like the combination of him and then uh, you have Jamari and Cam and these guys that had production for last year and what we're adding, uh, we feel very strong and very confident and very excited about about the makeup of what that room looks like right now and, and what we're going to be able to do. Uh, just to understand how the pass game opens up the running lanes now, and and uh, you're gonna have to lighten the box a little bit, and make decisions on how you're gonna how you're gonna defend us. All right, so the guys, uh, those are the guys catching the ball. How about the ones that are gonna throw the ball? The only new quarterback in this group uh, is a name familiar to a lot of Western New York uh, high school football fans. Cole Snyder from down in the Jamestown area, Southwestern High School, two-time All Western New Yorker, transfers in from Rutgers. Tell us about Cole and where he fits into the position with Matt Myers, Casey Case, and Brian. And sure. Um, you know, our job as a staff and my job ultimately as a head coach is to to uh, when it comes from uh, from a roster management standpoint, if you want to call it that, is just to make sure that we continue to add talented players in that locker room that fit our culture and our DNA that can bolster our talents and help us win football games on the football field. Um, Cole Snyder went into the portal, and and we immediately jumped out right over, right all over him in terms of uh, watching his film, watching his Rutgers film, watching his high school film. Fans, you you guys may remember. I mean, he's one of the most dynamic players coming out of Western New York when he came out of high school, signed with a Big Ten uh, school, and then uh, made a decision that he wanted to make uh, make a, make a change. Uh, we went through a heavy recruiting battle with him with some other MAC schools, and he decided to come back home. Uh, for, in, in his in his words, come back home and and uh, and, uh, and and come back to UB. So. Uh, 
uh, from a present standpoint. You know, you look at Cole, he's got three years of eligibility left, and he's got so much experience in college already. So we feel like he's got a great combination of that healthy balance of being able to have time to continue to develop him, but also not necessarily just being a freshman out of high school. Out of high school. So uh, we feel like just really excited about getting him here with us. And, you know, I had a meeting this morning with him, and, and he's sitting at the front row right in the middle of the seats and just, just, just really excited about what, the way he's carrying himself, the presence he's bringing in the building, the leadership that he brings with him, the seriousness that he has about uh, uh, the way he carries himself with the football piece of it and uh, what he's going to do this spring. All right, so uh, it should be an interesting battle for the quarterback position that will start with spring practice and, of course, roll into the fall. How about the big guys up front? You know, with graduation and some departures, the offensive line took a couple of hits there, but you have responded by bringing in a couple of transfers. Uh, Sidney Walker will come from UConn, and Desmond Besant will come from San Diego State. Tell us about them. Well, the, one of the biggest recruiting wins we got really was, you know, Gabe Wallace uh, that came back onto the roster. You know, Gabe uh, went into the portal, and we had lengthy discussions discussions uh, leading up to the decision and then really lengthy dis discussions throughout his time being in the portal and Gabe called back and said you know coach I, coach I want to come back to UB and I love it here I love everything that we're doing here and, and uh, we had to sit down and talk and we, we're really glad that he's back with us you know I Gabe's a he's a warrior he's, he's battled he's battle tested and he does a great job for us and we look at that you know the first place in recruiting that you start is in your own roster in terms of making sure you retain talented players uh, so we're, we were really glad we were able to do that with him and then also uh, what you just mentioned Sydney Walker is a starter that came over from UConn, played extremely well for them. Uh, he's a leader. He's got great presence. He's got a high football IQ, comes from a great family background, and we couldn't be more excited about having him, uh, you know, a starter from another university come over uh, and joining us. And then Desmond Besant, well, when you guys get your eyes on him, I mean, he's you look up and you keep six looking up at seven. him. I mean, he's 6'7". He's all a 6'7", too, and he's over 300 pounds. And, and um, you know, we were able to uh, get him on a visit and uh, sit down with him and talk things through, and uh, he made a decision to come over here to UB. So we feel like we got some athleticism, some length. You know, you got Big Gabe, you got um, uh, Desmond, big bodies up front, and uh, we're going to continue to add to that to that line uh, throughout the spring and the summer as well. Yeah, and uh, and then along with the line and tied into the passing offenses, you've added a tight end to the mix, a couple of them actually, but in particular Robbie Mangus, who's a grad student transfer, who comes from Dartmouth where he was a captain, uh, where he averaged over 20 yards a catch. Uh, what can Robbie bring not just to the passing offense, but helping out on the offensive line as well. Too. Yeah, well, you know, you know, our style of play up front, you know, we, we you know, we start with the run. You know, we're a running team, and, and uh, we, we feel like that opens up the lanes that we need in the throw game. And, you know, when the way where Robbie fits into that is, you know, he's 6'4", 260. You know, so he can he can set the edge and set the perimeter for us on, you know, down blocks and reach blocks. And he's just – he brings kind of what, you know, so to speak, that grown man presence just because he's, he's big, he's strapping, he's strong. Uh, First-class family, uh, we could not be more excited about him coming over from Dartmouth and joining our roster. He was all Ivy League at his previous university, and uh, we just feel like we added a great addition um, uh, in terms of maturity, in terms of experience, in terms of overall play style, mentality, all the things that we're looking for out of that tight end spot, and we're going to be able to use him in the throw game as well. You know, he can run routes, he can get open, he can create separation, and uh, he checked every single box that we were looking for on the field and off the field in that tight end spot. And then the one other high school recruit at the tight end position was Cameron Ball, who comes from Washington DC another big kid at six foot six yeah you'll see something pretty consistent with most of these guys that we're talking about this morning in terms of size and length you know, uh, Cameron Ball is 6'5 plus, and, and he's going to be over 220 pounds when he walks in the door. Uh, we feel like he has the frame that we're looking for in that tight end spot. Uh, we can't wait to get him here with us over the summer, get him to work. He's coming up from Gonzaga High School. Small tidbit that uh, Robbie Mangus and Cameron Ball both came from the same uh -huh, high school in D.C. So uh, there's that kind of that big brother, little brother aspect yeah. that they got going, and uh, we're looking forward to getting both of them, uh, getting both of them going and, and rolling with the offense. All right, and then the, the wrap up the offensive edition. Uh, you're, you're pretty loaded at the running back spot, been loaded, still loaded. So you only added one, but he's a pretty interesting guy in Jackson Paradise who comes from New Hampshire where he was the New Hampshire Player of the Year. Uh, he, he's a guy that I'm intrigued about getting a chance to see. Yeah, Robbie, is he fits us to a T. I mean, he's just um... – 
uh, everything that we talk about, uh, work ethic uh, from a cultural standpoint. And then when you watch his film, I mean, uber productive, uh, one of the top players in the New England area, and um, just could not be excited about that recruiting win for us in that corridor of the country. Um, you know, he had um, a couple couple of the schools up in that area that wanted him, and he came out our way, and Chris White did an outstanding job of recruiting him and got, got him over here with us. And he's another guy, just, you know, we can't wait to get him out there and get him going with us and let him, and let him get to work, so... Right. I think I think this may be two four seven call to see if we got the number one. <laughs> see, if we got, see if we got the number one class or not. <laughs> well, that's a call that you are allowed to take uh, if it in fact is. But uh, you know, Dylan McDuffie is back. Ron Cook is back. Michael Washington is back. Uh, running back again is a loaded position. And as you said, you're a running team. That that works out pretty well, doesn't it? Yeah. You know, you know we we know you know Dylan had one in the portal, and and uh, we sat down with him and his dad and and uh, talked through things. And you know, Dylan's a staple. You know, McDuffie's there staple here in, in the 716 area and we're really excited to have him back a part of the family he's laser focused he's locked in and uh, we feel like uh, he's going to just build on that thousand yard season that he had last year and uh, couldn't be more excited that he's back and then Mike Washington Ron Cook Ron Cook tremendous back that's coming back one more year return man uh, we feel like we got a great mix of uh, you know experience youth uh, size speed everything you need to make up that backfield and uh, looking forward to getting to work this spring with him all right so that wraps up the new offensive additions for coach Mo on the Bulls squad so let's flip it to the other side of the ball the side that's near and dear to your heart and when I'm sitting next to you I always have to start with the defensive backfield none of that defensive line stuff we get started with where you live and uh, the list of particularly the transfer guys is really interesting in the defensive backfield Elijah Blades transfer from Florida and Texas A&M uh, Jamin Muse from Boston College Caleb Offord from Notre Dame uh, you know th- these are some high level guys at high level schools go ahead and give us the rundown on your new DB group yeah well I'll tell you this I'll start you know uh, well Elijah Blades Elijah Blades is a former uh, number one ranked junior college player that came out of um, Arizona Western Junior College by way of California Pasadena California. Uh, Elijah, all he did was come into the SEC when I was at Texas A&M and start, uh, was a day one starter for us at corner. Played extremely well for us and did a great job. Um, and, you know, I, I went on to the Dallas Cowboys and we, you know, football paths and careers, we kind of came back together again. So we couldn't be more excited to have him here with us. Uh, Keyshawn Cobb is one of the safeties that we got um, uh, out of uh, out of Fourth Valley, Georgia. He's a Georgia kid, went to Mississippi Junior College, really had half a conference USA that offered him, had uh, multiple trips, uh, you know, uh, Middle Tennessee, UAB, Arkansas State, South Alabama. Uh, just, I cannot speak volumes about the the type of recruiting win this is for us. Uh, every one of his offers were in the South, uh, you know. And, and Keyshawn, Keyshawn Cobb and his family are from Georgia. They're from the middle of Georgia. They're from the Deep South. And and to be able to go down there and, and get a recruit uh, like Keyshawn's uh, caliber and. And, um, and and to get that recruiting win for our staff, it was a big, big win for us, and we're excited. Keyshawn's here, and he's he's focused, and he's get, he's getting ready to get to work. Uh, Devin Grant, you know, our in-state safety that we signed, we feel like one of the most dynamic high school players uh, at his age in the country, four-star recruit coming out of high school. Um, he is the second-rated highest player to ever sign out of high school to UB. Wow. Um, big win for us. We identified Devin uh, at a Rutgers camp, and we saw him, and, you know, Devin's uncle, Dean Marlowe, used to play for the Bills. That's right, a couple played, of years ago. Played for me at James Madison and uh, know their family extremely well. Dean and his whole family called me uh, about Devin when I first took the job here, so we, it was a long recruiting battle for, for us to, uh, to get him over. But, you know, Devin turned down a Big Ten opportunity to come here at UB. And, you know, and he's, a, he's a four-star kid that's coming uh, from Holy Cross High School out of New York. Uh, his head coach, Tim Smith, at Holy Cross uh, is a great friend of ours. And uh, we just couldn't be more excited about the length, athleticism, 6'3", 190, um, you know, offense, defense, special teams. He's a, a big-time basketball player. Uh, he just fits, fits us to a T in terms of everything that we're looking for. Uh, Tavian Mayo is a safety that we signed. He's another recruiting win for us out of Leesburg, Georgia, out of uh, Lee County High School by way of Butler Community College. Another big recruiting win in the South for us. 
and then you look at John and Muse. So John and Muse really kind of, kind of came way of Max Michelle. They were high school. They teammates. They were high school teammates, and and Max uh, Max uh, came. I got a guy for I you. Got right? a guy. I said I got a guy. <laughs> we got John down, and just fell in love with him and his character. John's a former starter out of Boston College, mm-hmm. and we're looking forward to him and plugging in and getting ready to play. Caleb Alford uh, is coming over from Notre Dame at cornerback. Caleb, uh, we recruited at Texas A&M three years ago, so we have a prior relationship with their family. He decided to go into the portal, and uh, and then we got on the phone after after him entering the portal and got him over our way. Uh, he's coming over from Notre Dame. I'll tell you the type of recruit he was out of high school. Sure. And then Jaden Oliver, big, big, big win Six, for us. Three corner. Big win, big win, big, long, athletic. You know, Jaden is from Tampa, uh, Florida originally. And uh, he goes out to New Mexico Military Institute to junior college, uh, and then the, the recruiting battle starts. You know, he trips against he trips at uh, Florida Atlantic, he trips at Temple, and then he has our trip last. Um, Jaden sits in my office and says, "Coach, I want to be a bull." You know, and um, you know, just the eruption that we had six three one eighty five long rangy talented player won a national championship at his junior college, and we just couldn't be more excited about what he's bringing to the table. We feel like that collectively. Uh, just the mix of size, athleticism, speed, playmaking ability. Um, we feel like we just made an outstanding amount of great additions uh, to the overall makeup of our back end, and uh, and we're really excited about what we feel like we're going to end up looking like this year. Yeah, and a lot of guys with experience playing at very high levels, so it'll a little be a little easier for them to step right in. Uh, most of the defensive focus in these in this group of 24 was on those DBs, but there were a couple of other positional guys, and you know around here you recruit a linebacker named Khalil, and that always raises all our eyes, doesn't it? Well, Khalil, you know, so we uh, Khalil. Khalil came is from Virginia. Khalil Murdoch. Is Khalil his name. Murdoch from Virginia. His nickname is Red. Everybody oh. calls him Red. So oh, there you that go. Works for me. <laughs> but uh, Khalil six three two twenty. He's he's by way of Fork Union Military Academy and um, did an outstanding job on film there. We actually ended up signing two players, Khalil Murdoch and Cameron Olds, both coming from Fork Union Military. Um, and uh, both of them outstanding uh, young players, length, size, speed, 6'3", 220. Uh, I mean, he, he's put together, and, he, and he's coming with all years of eligibility from prep school, so we're excited about what he's going to bring to the table. Focused, great heart, great head connected together, and, he's, and we just can't wait to get him on the field and see what he does. Yeah, uh, and there's a couple other defensive linemen. You wind up bringing in five total defensive linemen, most of them. Is, is there a, the, the fact that the – the defensive linemen were more of the high school re- recruits, part of the development of the position a little yeah, bit? Yeah, when you look at our overall class, 24 uh, total players, 10 were grad transfers. Uh, I think we had, what, five that were junior college. Mm-hmm. Uh, we went seven out of high school, and then two came from prep school. We feel like it's a good balance of uh, of, 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 uh, of uh, seniority and uh, and new coming youth and length, size, speed. You know, the defensive line is, uh, is an area that we address both uh, through uh, junior college, through a portal and also through uh, through high school kids, you know Jamari Cord coming up from South Carolina. You know he's an impressive, impressive, impressive young player. Could not be more excited about him coming up. And if you get get two minutes, take a look at his highlight film. I mean, he's wrecking havoc down there in his in South Carolina and did an outstanding job. Um, and then we also added Cornell K- Evans from the very uh, notable St. Francis well, Academy. I feel like we you know St. Francis and I we got a direct flight. Well, uh, we got a direct you know, flight going and, back and, and if forth. you go right to Justin. Wynn- Winter's office. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go right back to see Justin and and um, you know we, we we coming from you know Jared Patterson and James Patterson and just the tradition that they have. Uh, you like and, that DMV, don't uh, you? Uh, that DMV is always good to us. Forty-five minute direct flight, <laughs> so you can't beat the location and <laughs> and uh, those guys do a great job down there in St. Francis. We couldn't be more happy about the guys. And then Devin up. Morgan as well is another Devin, St. Francis kid, right? Devin another Morgan, lineman. Cornell Evans, both guys came to camp. Uh, came to camp over the summer in June and uh, worked out in front of us. We offered them right on the spot from coming to camp. I mean, these two guys, we had probably hundreds of D linemen D-line come through at the front of every line, uh, went through all the drills. I mean, w- maybe two of the hardest working kids I've ever seen come through a camp. They were prepared, they were ready. They seized the moment of their opportunity to come to camp. They earned their scholarship, and uh, we couldn't be more excited about them joining the class. So there you go. That's the that's the newest class, and obviously, you know, folks. Other folk, than that, Paul, we've just been relaxed. Other than that, you've just been sitting around with his feet up like he always does. But, uh, you know, and, and again, I think the 
interesting thing for fans to understand is in, in five years ago, that would have been tw- 20 high school kids and maybe three or four JC kids. Right. You know, here, as you ran through the mix, that's the world that we live in. You need kids that are more ready to step in. Kids are more looking for better opportunities, but you also have to juggle the development part of it, right? 100%. Well, you know, we're, the, the, the benefit for us right now is that we have this, we have, we have a reach right now. And our, our staff, the way we're built and the way that we, uh, we, our ability to recruit, our ability to reach kids from all over the nation, the experience and the background that we have on our staff. We have multiple coaches that have been at multiple places. Uh, you look, we, in terms of being able to, number one, recruit our own state of New York and being able to keep talented players. Well, you know, we signed Devin Grant. We beat a Big Ten school on Devin Grant. We signed Nick McMillan. He had multiple MAC offers. We get Cole Snyder back home in the state of New York. So we're always going to start home. Uh, then we're always going to make sure that we, we, uh, we're not going to limit ourselves geographically to anything. You know, we're going to be able to go down to Georgia, go down to, uh, go over to California if we need to, go down to Texas, go wherever, wherever it may be. We have a national brand here at UB uh, that we feel like we can walk into any home in the United States of America, and it's, it's a recognizable brand, and we can form the relationships and make the ties that if we feel like they fit who we are, we have the ability to go get those talented players wherever they're at. And what that then leads to is what you joked about before, but the reality is is you may have the top-ranked recruiting class in the Mid-American Conference. Um, I don't know that that's always – I know you come from a world where those things are important. Maybe at this level it isn't always get the play that it does in the SEC, but – how important is that to build your brand, to build the reputation of this university, to be able to to have people look at those lists yeah. and see you at the top? Well, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to take this lightly. You know, it, to be able to come in here right now, and um, you know, we had to assemble the staff, and, and and we went through. Really, we're still in year one together right now. And uh, uh, from eight months ago, nine you got months three ago, three more months before we still that got changes. three more months. <laughs> you know, we're still in this year one together. But, but to, to 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 where we are right now, to have the potentially, we, we think at the end of uh, when the all all the rankings come out, we're going to have the number one recruiting class in the Mid American Conference. And what it does is it speaks to not only the kids that are in our locker room, uh, but the future Bulls that are coming up next. That if you know, we're going to have talented, big time players come here to play at UB, and come and join what we're doing. You know, our reach is wide. We're able to get talented players from all over America, and um, and uh, we feel very strong about that. You know, to, I think right now we're sitting at number two. I am literally checking my phone. I think the he final is. rankings come out here in the next hour, and we think we may end up with the number one class, and it's something we're very proud of. It takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of uh, relationship building. The reach has to be there. The connection has to be there, and they have to believe in what we're doing, and and, and for these players to come, come in and really turn down multiple Power 5 schools, multiple Group of 5 schools for us to go down to Tampa or go down to Georgia, go over to California to keep the guys in state, the ones that we wanted to keep in state, to keep these guys in state. Um, uh, we don't want to take that lightly at all. You know, we're, we're, we're sitting here with, with one of the top classes in the MAC, and we think we're going to end up being the number one class in the MAC. It's something to be proud of. Uh, we're not done yet. We're still going to be adding guys throughout the spring and through the summer. You just look at the way the portal is and with just the, the, the mobility and fluidity that, that, it, that it has. We have scholarships remaining where we can still add players, and, and we're going to make sure that we use them wisely uh, and that we, we approach our class really in a 24-7, 365-day approach to continue to build and add to the locker room. All right, and as we wrap up this edition of the In the Bullseye podcast with uh, Coach Mo, uh, you had some changes on your coaching staff. Again, the, the nature of what college football is these days. Tell everybody a little bit about um, a couple of your new additions, and then I know there's some promotions as well too, but uh, start with your two new coaches. That's new defensive coordinator Brandon Bay. Bailey and new running backs coach Greg Knox. Yeah, couldn't be more excited about Brandon Bailey. Brandon's coming up from Texas A&M University uh, where he was with me. Uh, uh, my last year there was his first year there. He stayed back and did an additional two more years really studying from one of my best friends in the pre- profession, Mike Elko, who's now the uh, head coach at Duke. Uh, so from a systematic approach and from a uh, overall schematic approach in terms of how we're going to implement the defense and, and what we're looking to build, uh, not just getting the talent players but from a systematic approach to, to 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 develop the players the right way has a lot of familiarity with things that I believe in and we believe in together and uh, we couldn't be more excited that we were able to grab him up from the SEC and get him up here with us uh, he's uh, he's been here for two or three days so far he's pumped up if you see him on social media he's all over social media and and uh, hitting the ground running in terms of recruiting meeting with the coaches doing position meetings with the players I think he already took uh, all the linebackers out to eat on Sunday oh, so they were excited. Start. that's a good way to start take them out I think they went the bar bills together has 
had That's some fun a good there. Way to start. And uh, so we couldn't be more excited about Brandon joining the uh, Brand, uh, Brandon joining the UB family. And then Greg Knox, uh, 20 years. Incredible over, resume for Greg. Greg Knox is over 25 years coaching in the SEC. I'm going to say that one more time. He's over 25 years coaching in the SEC. Ole and Miss. He's here with you now. He's here at UB. And um, and I'll tell you this truthfully, he turned down another job last night to stay. And uh, he's a friend. Greg and I were together at uh, at, uh, at Mississippi State, and uh, we're able to have have uh, some good, great relationships that go back uh, uh, to uh, to Starksville. And um, just couldn't be more excited about Greg being here with us. The experience that he brings, the knowledge that he brings, uh, the lineage of being just a successful big time coach. He's been an interim head coach, and and um, he's a great sounding board for me. And I just couldn't be more excited to have Greg Knox here and uh, doing uh, doing this thing with him here. And then a couple of promotions from guys that are already on your staff: Ron Whitcomb, Joe yeah. Licata, Chris Schaefer. Tell us a little bit about some of those changes. Well, we got to start with Mullinich now. We got to start with Jake Mullinich. Yes, we do. <laughs> it's always good to yeah. have Mullinich to stick around well, here I in saw, the UB program. I saw Mullinich was exhausting some of his eligibility, so I said, "Come on back, man. We can't. We got to make sure we keep two Mullinichs in the locker room at That's all right. times." That's right. Yeah, his younger brother. Why? He's still so on, the the roster, brothers on the roster, but Jake is sticking around. Yeah, Jake's great. sticking around. We're going to allow him to come back and um, uh, finish his, uh, his master's and, and uh, in an intern uh, role with us uh, in the weight room. So he's going to help out in the weight room and help Coach Cole and Coach Heiss continue to develop and build those guys uh, culturally and, and developmental-wise in the weight room. So we couldn't be more excited about Jake there. And then on the staff, in-house, we made some additions and some promotions in terms of Joe Licata adding on that high school relations football alumni. Uh, just, he's got great he reach. He knows that area. I'll just tell you what, man. You just, I mean, Joe, Joe Licata's just got great reach, and we couldn't be more excited to retain him. He had some opportunities to leave, and he chose to stay. Um, and then Ron Wickham now is promoted to our recruiting coordinator. All he did was respond with uh, having a number two ranked class, or go. number one Good potentially start, ranked class. The bar high. I know, set it high. <laughs> so we, and Ron's getting, uh, you know, he did an outstanding job this past year coaching our tight ends, and, and uh, we were happy to give him that promotion. And then in house from an operations and recruiting standpoint, Chris Schaefer, Andrew House were both promoted promoted uh, to a full-time roles for us, just the work that they do kind of behind the scenes, football events, recruiting, operations, all the moving pieces that uh, that keep every, that keeps everything functioning in the right way. Well, we touched on a lot of stuff here because there's been a lot going on, um, but there's a lot of excitement. you got spring ball coming up here soon, chance to get these guys on the field, and of course the season starts in September at Maryland, and uh, I know we're all excited to get a chance to see all of these new players, how they fit in. The lineup might look a little different than it was last year, but that's always a good thing to too, so um, try to find some time to relax here, will you? At least a little well, bit. Well, I want to make sure everybody knows that we got spring game uh, April 30th at 12 o'clock on Saturday. Uh, so we'll mark the calendars for that Saturday, April 30th, 12 o'clock. We'll kick off spring game. Spring football will start really the Tuesday after our spring break. Um, uh, so we're going get, to get rolling on like a Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday practice schedule. And I think we are 200 and I think 11 days away from Maryland. <laughs> you always have the number for me, don't you? You always. Yeah, and of course, that spring game is going to be all Bulls fans' chances to see a lot of these guys that we talked about today yep. to get your first look at them. So we encourage everybody to come out and check out the the annual Blue White Spring Game. Mo, always good to catch up with you. Congratulations Thank on you. the recruiting. Congratulations on all this work that you have done to figure out the crazy new world yeah. of college football. Yeah. For us as fans, it's been hard to keep track of it. Got to be harder for you, but congratulations. Thanks on so much, Paul. Thanks. All right, and we thank you for this good up to date uh, news on UB football. We thank you for joining us on this edition of the In the Bullseye podcast.